Hey, how's it going, everybody? Tall Tesla guy here. Uh, we're talking about something specific today, and this is a, a thing that always comes up no matter what, no matter how many times I talk about it, no matter how many times I see articles about it, people still ask, how far can you go in the car? Do you get range anxiety? What if you, what if you run out of battery? You know, all this kind of stuff that happens with EVs or what people think happens with EVs. And I wanted to kind of dispel some of the rumors, but I want to talk about it and address it and see if I can come to a conclusion as to why, where, where people's thoughts are when they think of that kind of stuff. And I want to share a little bit of my experience about it too. All of this stuff is coming out, V4 superchargers that are even faster. And then new reports are saying that, hey, Tesla might have been lying all this time about the range, that it just doesn't exist. It's not there the way that they think it is. So we're going to dive into all that today. So sit back, relax, and you're watching The Tall Tesla Guy. I'm going to start right into the V4 superchargers. If you are thinking about getting a Tesla, if you had considered it or you own one, you know what a supercharger is. And now the superchargers are proprietary to Tesla. And I say that with an asterisk because that is changing quickly. Tesla is selling the rights for other companies to use them as well, in addition to Tesla. And in fact, Tesla is charging adapter, which is the NACS charger, which is this is going to be something that uh, becomes the standard, at least in the United States. It's not a surprise to me. It's a faster, more reliable, better charging system than anything else that's out there. And I've tried all of them, uh, so I can attest to that for sure. But one thing Tesla did in the very beginning, talking about the superchargers, is they created this vast supercharging network with 30,000 superchargers all across the country, over 50,000 globally. And it's basically, so they say, everywhere you want to be. And I can say to that as well, that when you're driving on the highway, it's going to be there. In fact, they're in a lot of remote areas now off of some of the routes here instead of just the major highways, which is huge in town, off exits, all over the place. They're, they really are everywhere now. Now, other EVs just didn't have that until this point. You had to use, we had to rely on third party charging networks. You had to rely on, you know, level two chargers, which to give you a little bit of, uh, of the numbers on that, the supercharger will charge you from zero, which you would never go up in zero, so let's say 5%, up to like 60% in about 12 to 15 minutes. Now that's more than enough for you to get to the next supercharger or likely to get home. And Tesla did that on purpose. They put the superchargers at a distance that would give you the opportunity to charge for the least amount of time at an individual one, sometimes less than five minutes, and then be able to get to the next one, charge for a couple minutes, and then get home. It's all part of the route planner that's incorporated into the car, now, the articles that talk about how long charging time is, how unreliable the charging networks are, they're never talking about Teslas. They're never talking about the supercharger network because you get a level two charger from like ChargePoint, Electrify America, EV and Go, even some of the DC fast chargers, they're really only level two. And I've sat at those before, even with a low battery trying to charge up, and you're lucky if you can get out of there in an hour. It's just not there. So if you think of it like that, then 100%, it is so time consuming to own an EV if you have to charge on the go in situations like that. Thankfully, Tesla's nothing like that. The Tesla supercharger network, in my experience, has been 100% reliable and it's been the fastest charging experience that I've had with anything that I've ever charged. So Tesla aside, these types of articles talk about the sort of EV experience and in reality, they're not talking about Teslas. They're not talking about superchargers. And in the future, once all of the other EVs adopt the NACS charger, which is the Tesla charger, they're all going to be going to superchargers also. Now, not talking about the lines or the weights or anything like that that are most likely going to be experienced in some of the larger markets. You're not going to have the wait time that you did before. So I can only imagine that EV adoption is going to be huge and through the roof in the upcoming years because of the fast charging. And then there's another part of this thing. They were talking about the range issue, range anxiety. Now, range anxiety, if you're not familiar with it, is being uncomfortable with how much range you have left, which is exactly as it sounds, actually. Now, you get that with a gasoline vehicle, too. Am I going to run out of gas and get stuck somewhere? However, with gasoline vehicles, there's gas stations everywhere. The preconception is that there just isn't charging places. Now, we talked about the proximity of charging to superchargers, which is all over the place and everywhere you need to be. But... If you're not thinking about it like that, you may not notice or see them. A lot of times they're in the Walmart parking lot or they're behind the building in the grocery store that you're at. 
and you don't notice them unless you're looking for them. Now they are everywhere, so there are places to charge, but you do think about that from time to time. And in the beginning, when I adopted into my, my Tesla, about the range. And then I went on my first road trip with the Tesla. In fact, I drove it as far as I could before it ran out of range. And I realized that it's so much further than I would ever need to go in a day. And it's so much further than I thought it was. 330 miles on a Tesla Model Y in perfect conditions is more than you could possibly want in a driving experience, especially it, it just, it's just not comfortable to be sitting in the car and not moving for seven, eight hours. I just don't have the vitality to be able to do these long Ironman drives anymore. And on top of that, we have a toddler. She is not going to sit in the car for five hours while we try to plug along and make it to, uh, you know, make, make it 500 miles without stopping. She's just not going to do it. So it become, it became quickly a perfect opportunity for us to stretch our legs, get some food, walk around the car, maybe water the dog, whatever it is. And the, the range that you get with the Tesla, even at under 300 miles, is more than enough. More than enough to get there. So I can say I never had the range anxiety. But what it did is it brought to light the fact that Tesla is selling this car, the one I'm currently in, as 330 miles of range. Now, it may get 330 miles of range if you are a average sized person, you don't have the radio and the air conditioner on, you're driving in perfect weather conditions with a uh, tailwind, uh, it's not hot or cold outside, and you don't move your body around inside of it, and you're not, you don't have any cargo. Now, what we found in our range test is real world range. The real world range, we had three people in the car. I had a, like a bag in the back, maybe. I was driving at normal speeds. I'm a normal Tesla driver. I don't race people, but I don't, I don't drive really slow either. And we ended up with 272 miles of range with about 7% battery left. Now, 7% battery is about 20 miles, 20 miles if you, you know, if it was exact miles to battery. So 20 miles on top of the 272 is going to put us pretty close to 300 pretty close to 300. Now, what we're finding is that Tesla drivers don't tend to drive optimally to save range. And that was the big thing that the article was kind of calling out. And maybe in defense to Tesla or EVs in general, you don't get the bad supercharging experience like you do with other EVs. But Tesla drivers drive a little bit faster. Maybe they don't, uh, they listen to the radio. They use the technology. I stop. I put it on YouTube and play videos. Um, I, I like the air conditioner on. I like the, the radio loud. I don't race people still. I'm driving with my family in the car. I have precious cargo in here, but you know, maybe if it, if the speed limit's 70, I'm going to drive 75, 76, you know, something like that. And I guess to get optimal range, you need to be going 65, maybe something, you know, along those lines, only driving on flat surfaces. I drive at any point in the day, whatever I need to do, I go. So it's 90, it's 82 degrees out right now. I'm going to get less range because it's going to use more air conditioner. It was 20 below and I was still driving the car. It's got a heat pump in it, which is awesome, but it's going to use more range. So I don't only drive it when it's 50 degrees and calm days on a flat road when I don't have anybody in the car but myself. But I can tell you that you're going to get more range than you, than you think, and you're going to get more range than you need. And that's, that's a huge part. And that's probably the biggest takeaway that I took from that article reading it to say, like, that might be an experience. That's certainly what people think the experience is like. But I can tell you firsthand that that's not true. It's not true all the way anyway, I should say. But either way, I can tell you. And if you've seen my other videos, you probably attest to this anyway. I love the Tesla experience. I love driving in the vehicle. I love, I enjoy the drive. My wife even said the other day that you seem to really enjoy driving again. And I lost it years ago. It just wasn't as much fun as it used to be, had, had been in the past, I guess. And I got it back quickly when I got my Tesla, uh, my model, model Y, first or second one. I just really enjoy it now. I really enjoy it a lot more than I did before. And I can tell you too, if you're on the fence, you're going to love it no matter what. Take that plunge pull the trigger, get your Tesla if you're looking for it. And then if you see those articles, if you have any thoughts or concerns on them, shoot it over to me. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it together. But either way, I appreciate you guys tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope maybe it threw a smile on your face. And I hope you guys uh, are having a great day, week, month so far. And you can uh, just enjoy some of the weather if you have it. So um, thanks for watching, everybody. And stay safe out there.